Okay, so let me tell you a background of this file. Where I capture this file? I capture this file in YIA. I sit outside the lecture theater using the antenna to listen to other people's Wi-Fi signal. And it is a CUHK login portal. Okay? So I not I mean a CHK CHK Wi-Fi signal. Okay, I basically steal something. So what is the thing that I steal? I this is a one of the capture, one of the data stream. So what is the meaning of one of data stream? You can see uh, how to understand this. So this is the source to the destination. Okay, and whenever you see this, the destination port. Oh wow, well, I should have double it. Destination. This is the port number from one port to another. The destination side is HTTP. That means it is going to the server. Going to HTTP server. If it is another way around, so that means this guy, this is the source, this is the destination, the port number is from HTTP to another port. That means it is the same a reply from the server. Okay? So let me tell you what are the first three. The freeway handshake, TCP freeway handshake signal. You don't need to care about this. This is the core, the main core, okay? So take a look at, at the middle part. If you have a Windows or a Mac, okay, you can open the Wireshark and open it so that you can see it together. So what is the thing within this area? The area when you open up the hyper test transfer protocol, you can see this, this is the get method, okay? And the hyperlink is very interesting. I try to zoom in so that you see this. So the request file is called slash generate underscore 204. What is the host? Can you see the host? Can you see the host? This is the host. You can now type the URL. Don't, don't worry, okay? This is from Google, okay? Don't, don't think that, ah, when I type it, okay, then I suddenly saw something to you. No, this is not my, my own site. Okay? So this is the IP address owned by Google. Google has a hyperlink called slash generate underscore 204. Okay? So because I have logged in uh, Wi-Fi, so if I type uh, 173. Point, I just type it here so that whether I can Google this IP address. 127.129. Okay, so, uh, okay, no use. So maybe I directly go there. Generate 204. Okay, what happened? Slash generate 204. Okay, HTTP. Eh? Oh, generate 204 become generate 404. Okay, so you can see nothing. You can see nothing, right? Because 204 is a signal generated in order to tell you that there's no content. It's no content. So when I load it, it's supposed to be no content. Now, let's take a look at the Wireshark capture. So the, this is the request, okay? The request header, you can see all the headers, very interesting. Now, take a look. What is this machine? What is this device? Take a look at the user agent and tell me what is this machine? Is this an iPad? Is this an iPhone? Is this a laptop? What is this? Nexus 4. Who is using Nexus 4? Me. <laughs> okay, this is me. Okay, I'm using Nexus 4. Okay, and by that time, it is a uh, Android 4.4. So I did an update to a 5 by that time. Okay? So Android 4.4, less is 4. Okay, so uh, what is the meaning? The meaning that I use this cell phone, okay, to connect to Google without my my consent, okay? I remember my consciousness to understand I could this like It is hidden inside the Android system. So what's next? It's a reply, okay? So in order to see all the traffics, you don't need to uh, take it on, look at it one by one. Basically, you can right-click, 
right click to the HTTP header, the get, right click it, and type follow TCP stream. So it will follow the entire communication and look at the communication body of the application layer. Okay? So that means that it is an application layer inspector. Look at that. So it will show you all things. Now, what is that? Suppose it will generate 204. Suppose it will generate 204, but I don't know why I received 200 OK. Okay? I received 200 OK, and there is uh, some interesting thing after it. Do you know what is it? I don't know why in YIA I can still receive ELG wave. Have you ever tried this? YIA can receive ELG wave. Okay? So look at the body here. Basically, this thing tell me to go to ELG wave, right? Can you see this? So I lied to you. It's not a it's capturing CHK Wi-Fi. Okay, look at here. I request this, but eventually, this page guide me to where? Guide me to this hyperlink. And look at this hyperlink. I zoom in. Can you see this word? ELG wave. Okay. And what is that? It's uh, other components of this uh, page. Okay. So that means what? Else? That means my cell phone try to uh, log in. I try to log in. I mean, try to go to the net, to the internet. But it so happened that. This, the phone cannot generate 204, 204 reply, but get a place give me 200 OK. So what's the time? The time that when you launch your browser, you go to a particular link and beam forward to this page. And this is how it's generated the reply so that uh, you are go to that page. OK? So this is how Android tries to log in. Understand? Ah, very interesting, huh? So I can also uh, capture in front of you guys. So, yeah? it don't allow me to do capture. Manage interface, no, no, no. There is no interface, wow, what happened? Yeah, maybe maybe next time I, I bring my window, okay? I mean, uh, in terms of uh, Wireshark, okay, window is more reliable than Mac. I don't want to say this, okay? So what's next? Next is about uh, the remaining part of the HTTP protocol. Okay, the remaining part is not uh, very uh, interesting. Okay, it's just to tell you uh, some of the code. I said that uh, last time the code are categorized into different levels. Uh, we have a successful level, redirection level. Uh, redirection usually you cannot see this. Usually, uh, I mean uh, the the most. I mean the not the most. The, the case that you always see is this one. When you go to the department page, immediately go to another link, okay? So why is that? Let's take a look, huh? Uh, Telex, www.csdchk.edu.hk, port 80, okay? So it's waiting. So what I'm going to do is, oh, oh, oh what happened? Why I cannot make the phone bigger? Okay, maybe I first uh, stop this. Control, close it. Make it the phone bigger. Okay, good. So, telnet. Then I type get slash. Okay, slash means the root directory. Okay, then HTTP slash 1.1, not the end. Host is uh, www.csc.ch.k. Uh, user agent, user agent. Okay, I'm using iPhone six. Okay. Uh, what else? A uh, connection type. Connection type. Uh, it is a uh, close. Good. E? Aya, it's just two hundred. Okay, with aya with meta refresh. Okay. Uh, it's just another way. Not 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 three three hundred something. Maybe I uh, try CHK. So to save the time, let me copy this. Okay, copy. Okay, 
run, paste it. Aya, CHK also use two hundred. Yeah, let's forget about it. Okay. Ah, right. I, I have a way. I have a way. Who has a personal homepage? No, no one. No one has personal homepage. What happened to you guys? Uh, maybe go to uh, go to our tutor, uh, Jimmy. Good. Okay. Hmm. CSS good, okay, that's with the CSS. No vowels, huh? Okay, so let's go to CSS, uh, let me copy this bunch of things. Okay, so get slash CSS uh, 1.1. 1 .1. Okay, so this bunch of things I can copy and paste. Good, this time you can see 300, 300 series. Okay. Fiendra series are telling you that it yeah, goes elsewhere using the protocol header with this uh, called a location header. Okay? Now, how about uh, 400? You already seen this a lot, okay? 404, 403, okay? Um, server error, uh, if you have write a CGI program, then you will know what is server error. Basically, you have a you, you ask the server to execute something for you, but you have syntax error. Then you will, it will tell you that, yeah, this is the server's fault, okay? So it's generate five, 500 servers, okay? So in 500 servers, there's no representation. I cannot generate it. Uh, then I will have a first quick summary. Uh, this HTTP protocol is very great because we can look into its content. I don't need uh, assistance from another program to decode or to encode. I just type it, okay? And it's well, that's why I call it ASCII protocol. Here I call it ASCII protocol. Then what? Then how about? Uh, where's my laser? Okay. So how about this? Le previous uh, lecture I tried in front of you. We have a closed connection type. We have keep alive connection type. Okay. So let's see the application. Now you already know that HTTP protocol is everywhere. Okay, now it's not just a uh, bind to a web browser or a web server. Okay, so even uh, some of the important uh, connections uh, like the uh, HTTP protocol, but for, how can I describe it? API lookup, okay? Let's say that I have a, I have a cell phone, okay? It's ask Google API for help, and Google API is just a host, is a web server, okay? Then actually you're using a, maybe a program, but generate a HTTP request in order to have a protocol query. Okay? So it is about uh, the, the web browser, you already know that, but web browser basically do more than you think. Okay, so what is that about? It is about how to write a web browser. And why as users say that web browser is a multi-threaded or multi-process environment, Basically, you can look at here, the index.html, right? You ask for it. Then when uh, HTML arrive, okay, what is the next step the browser will do? It will open up this HTML, look inside whether there are other links that I need to load, okay? So what is that example? The icon. The icon are not included inside the HTML file, so it Cross the HTML file, yeah. Cross the HTML file and try to download the remaining things. So in that sense, okay, after it is a process the HTML file, it no longer just sending one one traffic, okay. You can spawn that say after this uh, lookup the uh, the page, you know that you need to download ten documents. If it is a smart browser, it will spawn 10 threads or even 10 processes because every document usually are unrelated. So fire all 10, 10 uh, connections together to reach maybe different, different servers so as to speed up the speed loading, I mean, uh, the loading of the page. Okay. Uh, what happened to this mic? Uh, is this uh, running out of battery again? No, it's green light. I, I don't know why. Okay, so let's continue. And how about a server? The server, when we receive it, uh, let's imagine it's a simple scenario. I don't know whether you have, how many of you have configured a web server? 
Okay, only you. What? The entire class, only one guy know how to configure. Okay, do you know that, uh, if, how many of you, are, several of you are using a map, okay? Do you know that there is a Apache in your map? Yeah? Okay, so you, you can try to uh, uh, manage this. What is the management? Okay, the mapping from the roots, the mapping of the roots, okay, to the physical location. Okay, in our department, the mapping is like this, the way the slash, if it's a user account, basically it will map into a UAC, and then depends on which which account you are using. Let's say my uh, CSDI 450, it will map into this tab. Okay, so you can uh, try uh, modify your map machines, uh, mapping into other places, okay. I change it because I paste the yeah, document roots. Okay, document just point to, I don't know what is the place. Huh? Yeah, very strange, very strange place. So I map, map it into another place by own as a cat home. Okay, so that I can uh, do a very, uh, very efficient web posting tax. Okay, so you can try modify that. Basically, it's about this mapping. More than that, will be some other things that are uh, like uh, in an Apache or in a web server, you can tune whether it make use of multi threading or not. Okay. Later on, uh, every year I will ask okay, who want to have an extra lecture. The extra lecture is talk about the threading and the multi process mode, how to mix these two modes together in order to provide a high upgrade of high concurrency server. Okay. So later on, I will ask when you will have time to attend it. I will have an extra lecture talking about what is the mode that a web server should take. Okay, process or thread or both. Uh, HTTPS uh, basically it is uh, also inside the web server control. Usually the same server but with different ports. Uh, traffic rate control. Uh, you can block. I mean, uh, I mean, I don't say block, but uh, uh, control the bandwidth. Okay, we call it throttle rate. Throttle. That's what is the throttle. Throttle means uh, you turn the water tap. Okay, that that action is called throttle. Fluttering, uh, what is the traffic rate? Uh, usually, this are uh, also doable in Apache. Uh, execute other programs. So, if you're taking, if you're taking a four four one four zero, you know what I'm talking about. Basically, it's about the CGI or other things. Okay. So, some extra looks is about the CGI. So, if you don't want to take a four one four zero, but you want to know what it's talking about, what I'm talking about, the thing is about fault and execute. So, basically, the yeah. This slice is script, okay? Let's say uh, I want you to uh, generate a report from QSIS, okay? So yesterday, every people press F5, okay? Then what happened? Basically, inside the web server of QSIS, it fought an executor process, and that process, let's say it's a CGI program or other program, it will look into your great database, okay? I don't know why every, every year, I want to talk about this topic. It so happened that very close to great business. Okay, so every year I didn't need to change change the thing. Okay, so then you go to the database and generate the result and put all the results into HTML page. Okay, so there's something extra that you can uh, skip it. Okay, so what other uh, CGI program? CGI program is everywhere. Okay, uh, some people will use uh, Java to implement eBanking. I know because uh, I mean. Uh, the bank, I don't know why, bank trust Java, okay? They think that they are secure. I don't know why, okay? Java is still secure as long as the programmer is a good programmer, okay? And even if it's recording, I would say, uh, while those uh, HSBC guys, okay, are still a student, okay? Usually their program is debugged by me, or they discovered by me. So without me, do you think that the program can fuck or not? I would think they will, okay? And according to uh, some of the HSBC's current staff, they tell me some apps don't use it. Some apps use it, but don't lock it, okay? Because they know something bad is there, okay? And they know that they won't change it, okay? Uh, why? Usually because they change it, it's involved many money, many times, okay? Why? Because they write in a wrong language or wrong platform, so and so forth, okay? 
So uh, PHP, uh, you know, uh, is another thing. Do you know that the entire Facebook is written on PHP? Entire Facebook, okay, written on PHP. So that means that this kind of technology is everywhere. And this course, we will skip some of the things. We will skip proxy and cookies. Cookies, uh, you can take more courses and we will know. And proxy, uh, some years before, how many years? Three or four, okay? We still have an assignment asked you to implement web proxy. Very, very great uh, assignment, okay? You can uh, write a program to add a web proxy and catch YouTube video, yeah? Someone asks for YouTube video, okay, you cache the video locally, okay, and at the same time, you know why, why I want to illustrate this. That means that you are downloading the YouTube video. Then after it, you save it in your USB drive, then you will have a, okay, a offline copy of the YouTube video, okay. So uh, that is, will be a very great uh, assignment, okay, by that time we, Four or three years, we still have this assignment. But usually, why people hate this assignment? Think about it. Do you know what is a proxy? No one else. Okay, in Kennedy story, like, yeah. What is the meaning of story? Like? What is the meaning of proxy? You are a web server. You are a web browser. Okay, you guys are web server. Uh, web client. I am a proxy. Okay, so when you ask for outgoing traffic, you will first send all the traffic to me. I'm the middleman. I will go out and take the data back to you and save a copy of that data in my server and return the results to you. Why I need to save a proxy copy? Because, uh, how can I explain to you? In around year 2000 or before year 2000, okay, most people use modem to go online. Now what is the problem? The problem is slow, or there are many documents that are very uh, popular, okay? Every people use their modem to download the same thing. It is not convenient, okay? So many uh, ISP are doing something. When you ask for a file, let's say an uh, MPP file, I will cache in my proxy server. If I find that other people ask for the same link, I don't need to go out and pick it. I return this to you, so that I don't need to spend so much, so much time to go overseas and pick it for you. So this is why we have proxy, okay? And nowadays it's not useful anymore because now the proxy become a bottleneck, okay? You guys all try to kill me someday, so and you wait for me to process it, why not you go directly, okay? So uh, many years before it's not a bottleneck, it's a speed up, now it's a bottleneck. Now why is it hard to implement? Think about it. If I want to give you a reply, okay, what should I do? I first, you connect to me, I accept your connection, okay? Usually a browser not sending one connection, <coughs> it may send many multiple connections. So I receive your connections, <coughs> then I will keep your uh, connection alive. I don't close the connection. But at the same time, open another connection to get the data for you, and close that connection, we direct the traffic to you. So basically, it will control two socket at a time. Now, controlling two socket at a time is not good. Why? Because you become a bottleneck. So usually, the proxy server is multi-threaded or multi-process. I concurrently handle many, many sockets from you, and in the background, I control another set of sockets to get the data for you. Do you think that's easy to implement? No. All the things happen. About uh, multi threading, mutual exclusion, uh, producer consumer. This is actually a producer consumer model. Multiple consumer, multiple producer, I produce the data and get it back to you. Okay? So all the things will happen, and that's why every year when I say that, oh, right, 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 policy, they start with excitement. Yeah, then I know what happened in the real world. Then they will find that the real world is very cool. Okay, and find that they won't they won't try to understand that. Okay, please. Okay, can we can we have even partially? No, we're possible. How come? How come it's become partial? Okay, so this is a uh, bad. So if you want to know uh, how to implement it, okay, you can ask our tutor. One of the tutor is a uh, Bob. Okay, is still uh, with with us. Okay, from from Fairfax show now is a so He was the one in charge. You can ask him or read the textbook. 
about a red proxy. Okay, so time to go to DNS. So what is DNS? DNS, uh, uh, every year, uh, you will find that there are different kinds of attack over DNS. So why people try to attack DNS instead of, yeah, I want to attack a specific company. Why doing a DDoS attack over that company? But they don't, right? Because I know the target, why I don't bombard the target? Because it's not as effective as attacking DNS. Now what exactly DNS is, DNS uh, from, a, from a wording or from a definition, basically it provides you two things. One, you give the DNS server a domain name, it returns you an IP address of that server. Two, you give an IP address to the server, it will do a reverse lookup, give you back the name. Okay, so basically there's two services provided by the DNS, but People kind of uh, try to abuse DNS and provide more and more servers, okay? So let me show you one of the very famous servers that provide by DNS. NS lookup. What is the, do you, how many of you have used this before? Only a few, right? So only a few, okay? So what is this command? This command is, uh, uh, don't worry, it's also provided in Windows, okay? Open Windows. Uh, open a prompt, command prompt in window, then you can type in a lookup. And then I look up this place. Okay, CNN. CNN is supposed to be a big size, right? Supposed to be a big size. Okay, so how big it is? Okay. Aya, it's changed. Aya, I shouldn't use this. Maybe I look up Google. Google.com. Yeah, okay, Google is better. Okay, so I look up Google. Look at the results. How many servers Google has? One, two, three, four, five. Five servers. I'm so happy that their IP address is on the, is on the road, right? Straight on the road starting from 48 uh, to 52. Okay? So what is the meaning of here, okay? I, what I said is a value at the service from DNS, automatic load balancing. What is the meaning of automatic load balancing? Let's say Google has one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, five servers to serve you, okay? And I put the burden of choosing the, the server to the client, okay? I don't, I don't want to have a one server and then redirect the traffic. I want to put the burden to the client. The client do the load balancing. Now, how Google can achieve it? Very simple. Google first buy five IP address. And all five IP address buy to the same name. Buy to the same name. So the five IP address will now buy to the .google.com. Okay? And when I am a browser, I go to look up www.google.com, what will happen? I will choose, I will receive five, five results. Then the kernel, the OS kernel will just try to pick one over five and randomly, okay? So as if what? As if Google use money to buy more IP address, buy it to the same name, and push the decision on which server you choose on your side. So that means automatic load balancing. And who will do the load balancing? You, okay? You choose it one over five of chance, okay? But you will say that no. According to our experience, if I go to uh, um, Singapore, then I will go to www.google.com.sg. If I am in Hong Kong, it's google.com.hk. It seems not this case. It seems to be every country has a own Server, okay. So this is a two level of load balancing. First, is a load balancing if you are typing their name, the Google name, okay. Now let's say I pick a server here. Pick this server, okay. So this is a one of the results that DNS tell me. DNS will look up the IP address and the kernel think that mm, the first result is good enough, so give you the first result. 
Then what your browser is doing, your browser is doing a, uh, uh, how can I demonstrate it? Okay, let me just tell that to this server. Okay, I want to queue with this. Okay, and then try to get slash HTTP slash 1.1 connection close okay user agent user agent uh, 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 I'm Android okay um, what else what's that a host host let's say it's google.com and tell me what's going on what's going on what is the reply from, from the web server, from the global name web server. What is the reply? Huh? VOQ found and tell me to go elsewhere. Okay? Tell me to go to Hong Kong websites. So this is the second level of load balancing. The global five server only do a very, very easy job. The five server will detect where are you where you're coming from. Okay, I know where you're coming from. I forward you to the regional server. Okay? So there are two levels of load balancing from a from a Google. Google first layer is by domain name. Set up five servers, okay? And so that for those uh, many people have this address, I can still uh, handle it because only one fifth of the load we go to a specific server, and the server continue to distribute the load to the regional server. Okay, so how about the regional server? Will the regional server do the load balancing? Yes. One more layer. So that means three layers of load balancing for Google. One, you type a global name. I shared the load already, and the global server can we go to the regional and within the regional, the regional also have multiple server in order to share the load. So when you go to Google, you will never find that it is slow. Okay, usually when you go to Google, you find that it is slow, it's because your Wi-Fi is slow. Okay, not because of Google. It's because we have three layers of a low band thing. Okay, I don't know whether I I go to do an NS lookup here. I don't know. Just tell that to the Google local server what will happen. Okay, I didn't try whether it had next layer of load balancing, I guess not. Okay, the free layer of load balancing, very effective. Okay, so, there is a value at the surface, but when we look at the primary surface to translate uh, domain name into IP address, okay, so uh, basically, uh, this facility one thing is, I don't need to remember IP address, okay, and basically the the real working of a computer is like this. Although I don't write down the level, I will say it out what happened inside. When you type, uh, I mean, uh, if you want to go to Google, okay, then how can you really make that connection? In our sample program, simple network .sim, I never use the way name, right? I always type in IP address because from from a point of view of a process, I only need an IP address, then I can go to that specific target. Now, what if I want to enable uh, the, the domain name service, okay? I want you to uh, type a domain name in my sample program, box save, then I can go to a specific target, then I will need a DNS help. And the DNS help is a system call, okay? Our tutor will tell you what is that system call is, okay? And that means that when I type www.csd.chk.edu.hk, you will generate a system call, and a kernel will fire up the DNS service by you. Okay, you should actually because you triggered it. But the kernel absorb the load, and at the end, what is the being received? Okay, you will go to a place where we what we call a local DNS server. If you are inside CSD domain, yes, I mean the inside CSD lab, maybe. Okay. You're in the lab of CSD, then you will go to the CSD CS uh, local DNS server. If you are in the IE department lab, you will go to IE server. I still remember the name of IE DNS. Let me check. Is this a core I? 
n n s one dot r e dot c h k dot e dot h k. Right. Yeah, I I remember they have two or three servers. This one is called n s one. Uh, is NS free? Yeah, they are free. Let me check whether it's four. Whoa, how much money? Five? No, no. Oh yeah. I yes, four, four domain name servers. Okay. So, I I remember the department only are free. Department domain name server has a very strange name. Okay, I can't remember more. Okay, they know in the slide I will show you. Then after that, what will happen? Then your kernel will reply to you because in your program you have to write this system call to look up domain name into IP address because the socket library require IP address. Then you can receive the IP address and replies from the system call. Then use the another system call, connect system call with IP address to go to your destination. Okay, so this is the true story. All happen inside the kernel layer, okay. And in Windows, uh, you can uh, look at where is your domain name, uh, local domain name service, okay. In Windows, type this command. Can you see this IP config if you're using Windows? Then inside, uh, remember slash all. Without slash all, you cannot see this. Then you can see something interesting. Your local LAN Ethernet. Let's say I plug in the Ethernet. There is a DNS server. And it is the local DNS server address in department. In department, it is a core. I I remember the name. I remember the IP address. Okay. Okay. So this is a department's DNS server. Ah, oh, I don't know that it's Core Garden. Okay. I only know 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 this name. Okay. So. A. Eh? Wow, they bind these two together. Wow, so dangerous, huh? I don't know. They already bind these two together. Oh no, even one eight eight. Wow, I'm so lazy. Okay, so they are so lazy. Okay, they bind all these together. I don't know. I don't know they change. Okay. So this is how how our department doing. So this is uh, when you are inside department, you will use this free. Okay, so I show you this this results. Okay, we can skip this because it's just a one one is a forward lookup. I got wait whoa whoa. I'm sorry again. I don't know why. I click click into this to go to a deep, go to my PC. Okay, so I just shut down the shut down the web server. It's too dangerous. Okay, how about I take in this? Oh, I think this is no way. Okay, so uh, there's a reverse lookup. There's a forward lookup. Okay. And what I said before, uh, this all of that I don't know. Google has updated, okay? Google update uh, the link is no longer called www dot l, okay? But uh, what I'm going to say about this is, uh, when you register for a name, okay? Basically, if you have a web hosting experience, you know and all that, okay? You can buy more than one name to a specific IP address. Okay, or even you have a name, but you say that this name is a nickname. Okay, I have a true name. Okay, so in this record, the true name is www.l.google.com. Okay, Google has changes, right? So this is a uh, .com. Yeah, they already removed the the true name. Okay, this change the true name into this. Okay, let me think who has a nickname. What's nickname? Ah, uh, our department website. Our department website has a nickname. Oh, HK. So department website www.chk.csd.chk. What happened to me? www.csd.chk.edu.hk is a nickname. The true name is called Fortress. Okay. So what is the meaning of this code name? Yeah, very easy. You you don't understand this translate. Okay. Eh, no German. Okay, where is Chinese? Okay. Ah. So, there is two name, ah. Huh? <laughs> yeah, bad translation to do this. Okay, and as well the same re replies already tell you another thing. What I said before, automatic low bandwidth. 
Okay, of course the Google is not doing this simple job. They have a DNS, first layer of DNS globalization, another is a HTTP, we call it location aware, location awareness, and find where are you, and another level of uh, globalization, and at the locations are geographical, they closest to you, you find the server, then that server also has a layer of a DNS low balancing. Okay? So, I think this is time for me to stop. Okay, already at 18.15. Remember, next time, we will uh, 